We're talking about the state's role in our lives. Sometimes they overstep. Sometimes their policies do more harm than good. Britain is debating one such policy. It's called the prevent strategy. The name sort of explains itself, prevent. The goal of the strategy is to prevent people from being radicalized. It was implemented in 2006. Prevent identifies people who are vulnerable to radicalization. I know it sounds like a good idea, but think about this. Who decides if someone is vulnerable or not? Well, that's where Britain failed. Schools, hospitals, and local authorities were given this job. They had to identify so-called radical suspects. Guess who they identified? Some teachers reported primary school children. Apparently, they were waving toy guns around. Others reported teenagers playing violent video games. Long story short, prevent did not prevent anything. Multiple terror attacks were carried out by people referred to prevent. The 2017 London Bridge attack, the Parsons Green train bombing. Even last year's attack on Tory MP David Ames. So if prevent did not stop terrorism, what exactly did it achieve? Islamophobia, that's what prevent ended up promoting. Last year, the government of the UK decided to review the strategy, not because of the Islamophobia, but because it failed to prevent the attacks. And this review has split the British public. One group wants an independent review. They want to remove anti-Muslim bias from prevent. The other group is having none of it. They want the government to defend the prevent scheme. And leading the second group is former Prime Minister David Cameron. He has taken a break from writing books to write an op-ed for the Times. Cameron asked the government to defend its anti-terror program. If not, they would be enabling terrorism in his words. In fact, let me quote from what he wrote. Just as we need to counter the Islamist extremist narrative, we need to counter the anti-prevent narrative. We need to show that delegitimizing counterterrorism is, in essence, enabling terrorism. That is what David Cameron wrote. Strong words there, especially from a former prime minister. Let me break, break down what David Cameron just said. Britain must counter the anti-prevent narrative. If you criticize prevent, you're, in essence, enabling terrorism. And that's a big charge to make. And for the record, Muslims are not the only ones criticizing prevent. Teachers unions have rejected it. Even Tory MPs have sought to repeal some provisions. But successive prime ministers have refused to change it. Why? Because it reaffirms Britain's worst impulses, colonialism and white supremacy. Boris Johnson too has a chance to fix it. His home secretary has hinted at a possible overhaul of prevent. But David Cameron's intervention changes things. You see, Boris Johnson and his cabinet are not exactly popular right now. First, the Wuhan virus pandemic and the way they handled it. Then the Partygate fiasco. A lot of conservatives are gunning for Boris Johnson as we speak. Even his number two, Rishi Sunak, is under fire. Let me tell you what a recent Tory survey found. Rishi Sunak is the least popular cabinet minister in Britain. His ratings are minus 5.2. Beat that. Boris Johnson is third from the bottom. Ratings 6.6. .6. Both men have been fined for attending lockdown parties and chance, chances are things could get worse. The much-awaited Sue Gray report into these parties will be published soon. And rumour is it is damning. In which case, Boris Johnson will find it hard to remain in office. And his much-hyped successor, Rishi Sunak, may sink with him. This political climate makes David Cameron's intervention very important. A, Boris Johnson cannot afford to antagonize more prime ministers. He's already lost Theresa May. Cameron could be next. And B, this could be a life raft for him. Boris Johnson has already used the war in Ukraine to outsmart the opposition. This anti-terror program could be the same could do the same. Either way, it exposes the real face of Europe's anti-terror campaign. It's all about political convenience, you see. We saw it in France. We're seeing it again in Britain. So review or not, Britain's policy remains a tainted one. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.